All right, guys, we have one rule. Have fun. You got it. Hey, don't hit with the fish. Boom! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Go show me. Yeah. This, is hey. Man, this is fun! <laughs> <laughs> Can't keep up. Hey, I'm Corey Heppola. I'm a husband, a dad, and we live in the Twin Cities. I was born and raised in Ottertail County, Minnesota. Growing up, I was in such a hurry to leave that I never really got to know my home. What did I miss? What changed? I was gonna find out. You know, I, I never thought I'd be like this, where I overanalyze every decision and interaction with my kids. Am I being too strict? Am I being too easy? Am I doing enough? Oh yeah, no, thanks for asking. The family, yeah, we're doing really good. Uh, Camille's rocking. Our oldest is seven now and the twins are six. Am I doing enough? That's the one I wrestle with the most. I think that's my own personality, my insecurity. But here's the thing. At the core, we all want to set our kids up for success, which means giving them unique learning opportunities through different experiences. I loved my childhood. We had the lake, I was into sports, and we'd go on family trips where I was able to wear that red fanny pack. But it felt like we had to travel to the Twin Cities or to Fargo for a lot of things. So caring, yes. caring for others, Very that's much. like, it's like a genetic thing with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's Katie Gano, the executive director of this place, Otter Cove Children's Museum in Fergus Falls. And there are so few places in public life where kids can just be kids. We really ask kids to conform to adult expectations and behaviors, and that's okay. But children are the future, and so it's important to, um, those early experiences really, really matter. Well, and who knows what's gonna impact us. I remember my mom planning a trip for us to the Children's Museum in St. Paul, which is three and a half hours away from Perm, one way. Now that's a full day. And then we got hit with a blizzard and, and we couldn't go. It would have been nice to have something like Otter Cove near us growing up. It was a group of like three moms kind of sitting around a kitchen table and they're like, we need an indoor play space for our kids. There's snow on the ground nine months out of the year. We need somewhere to go. And so that was the original thought was just kind of an indoor playground. But that original thought kept growing and fast. Tasha Rolfs led a fundraising campaign, quickly scoring community support and a sweet spot right downtown in Fergus Falls. Typically, children's museums take three to seven years to open, and Otter Cove opened in less than two. Do you consider Fergus Falls a small town? Yeah. Okay. Oh, give me a break. It's not a dumb question. Fergus Falls was the big city for me growing up. It's so, I mean, this is really a unique thing for a small town. Absolutely, yeah. And, and you know, the next closest children's museum is probably St. Cloud. No, I won't just give it up, seriously. Let's put it to the test. Is Fergus Falls a small town? You can be the judge. Here are just some facts about Fergus Falls. Again, you can be the judge. It's the Ottertail County seat, has more than 14,000 people. Now, that's four times more than Perm. Just so you know, not trying to persuade. They've got restaurants, craft breweries, shopping, trails, a river walk park by the Ottertail River, and there are five different exits to Fergus Falls off I-94. Five. From Fergus Falls, right? Born and, Born and raised. So, like elementary school, middle school, high school, ever? You were always an otter. Always an otter. Katie grew up here. So did her husband, Nick. Were you in the same class? Yeah, yep, we graduated together. We didn't okay. date in high school, but. Really? Yeah, no. Were you friends at all? We knew each other. We, were, I, we weren't friends, though. Both Katie and Nick went to college in the Fargo-Moorhead area. Then, after college, when Nick was living in the Twin Cities and Katie was in Fargo, they were both home for Thanksgiving and they met at a bar. Why come back home? You know, so my husband and I, we knew we wanted to start a family. Uh, both of our families are here. I grew up surrounded by aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents and I wanted the same thing for my kids. See, it's all about the kids. I, I know it's cliche. But when you become a parent, your whole perspective on life and what's important changes. We want our kids to be more successful than us, have it easier than us. But we all still need to have our own personal passions, use our own gifts for good. And I, I think, I think there's this misconception that if we leave the big city and go live a rural lifestyle, 
that, well, it's all over for us. You don't have to give up your passion to move back home to a small town. Yeah, yeah, it's just been, I think we were a little nervous about that when we first moved back, what we were giving up, but we've really found we, we didn't have to, it's all here. Like Katie's husband, Nick, he's a band teacher by day and has a band, the Winter Sloss at night, and they've been doing gigs all over the area. He, just, he joined a band about a year ago. They're a dad band now. They all have kids. And so <laughs> that's just been so important for him, too, to, to kind of get back to his yeah. his roots a little bit of music. Is and that their band name, Dad Band? It is now. The, the, the last member just had a baby. So I think that's kind of their nickname now is the Dad Band. Really yeah. Good. All right, guys. We have one rule. Have fun. And then there's Katie. She went to school for child development and worked as a professional development and training provider for child care providers in North Dakota. She had no idea this, Otter Cove, was possible in her hometown. Probably about five years ago, I told my husband that my dream job would be running a children's museum, never thinking that would happen, because why would it? Um, and, and here we are. And here we are, the place for kids to be. Since opening up in September 2020, Otter Cove has welcomed more than 41,000 visitors from 39 states, eight countries, and hundreds and hundreds of zip codes. And if you look closely around Otter Cove, 20 of those zip codes are on display because Ottertail County has 20 zip codes and you'll see. So Otter Cove really was designed to resemble Ottertail County. Um, that's part of our mission is that kids coming to Otter Cove feel a sense of place and purpose. We've got the Otter Tail River behind us. They can fish, uh, fish off the dock and catch their fish. We've got the Central Dam and the falls going into the river. Um, just so really making that connection of our community. You know, we've got our, our otters, obviously. Uh, our critters are throughout. Uh, they're a pretty important part of, of this community. Okay, I want some lunch. And then the kind of the back half is really designed to resemble a, a mini downtown. And so again, so they, they recognize these places that are in our community that they go to every day um, and they're able to recreate it and really develop that connection to our community and know that they have a part in it. And now you have to... Nom, 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 nom. I have to pay. Even if they're just pretending to make a sandwich, they're an important part of the community. Well, we're live here at the Swan Lake stage and we have just the greatest entertainment to present to you today. That's right, we have uh, three of the loudest kids ever. They are called the Kid Band. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> this is the best. Everybody's a part of that. Are you going to sing for us? Guess not. Still not the worst show Camille and I have ever anchored together. You know, lots of times in live TV, you don't know what's gonna happen, and that was one of those cases. Speechless. Yeah, I'm sorry, the way it's gonna be after that, oh, no. they're just, our whole house, just every day, it's just. Oh, that this place at the end of the day is. It's good though, kids are here playing. So. Yeah, yeah. Not just playing, learning, experiencing, and we don't have to drive hours in the winter to get there. It just shows the value that our community has placed on children, that there's a place designed for them to just be who they are, to learn how they learn, to be hands-on and, and play and explore. It just, just really speaks to um, the heart of this community. There's something to be said about experiential learning, having our kids actively interact with the world around them, the people they meet, the nature they see, the, the sandwiches they make, whatever. It all has value. Be passionate about our home and about learning more about others' homes. You know, that just might be the best lesson for our kids.